Have you ever seen these hang glider, paper airplane shaped aircraft flying around the beach? Or maybe at your home airport and wondered, what's a trike all about? Well, I just did. All right, so I'm back here in Zephyr Hills, Florida. And as you can see, as I walk around, I'm in a hangar just full of color. Where am I at? Evolution trikes. We're gonna talk about trikes today. Evolution Trikes produces four very exciting models for you to choose from. The Rev, RevX, Revolt, and Revo. Let's take a tour at Evolution Trikes. Hey, Larry Mednick, uh, owner and designer of Evolution Trikes. Uh, we've been established since uh, 2009. We're here in Zephyr Hills, Florida. And uh, we're here in our showroom uh, with uh, four of the models that we produce, the Rev, the RevX, the Revolt, and the Revo. And uh, so anyway, what's uh, beside me here is actually our Rev X. And uh, we actually don't have any of our ultralight versions of the uh, Rev X, which would be just the Rev here. But uh, basically, uh, not a lot of difference between the two machines. They're both uh, single seat, uh, no front strut. So when you're flying, there's nothing in front of your body. Uh, the, in fact, the instruments are even between your legs. So when you're looking out, there's just not a whole lot there. It feels like that dream that you had just kind of flying through the sky. Um, the Rev X is the hot rod version. It's heavier and a little bit faster than the ultralight version. It's N numbered and requires a pilot's license. This one here is a 65 horsepower. And then this has our XS package, which is uh, short for extra speed. And so that is a high performance double surface wing. This wing can cruise uh, at uh, 55, 65 is its happy spot, but it will go over 80 miles an hour straight and level, and of course even faster in a dive with a V and E of 115 miles per hour. It won't go that fast just due to the drag. Um, it will when uh, you put this wing on our faster model, we'll get to in a second. But uh, this machine is uh, very, very high performance. It's full suspension, and it does something that's really, really cool that a lot of our customers uh, have uh, purchased uh, this model because of, and that is the fact that it folds up in six minutes. Uh, you can put it in a trailer, take it wherever you want to go, and then uh, put it back up. One person, no tools. And so this is our RevX. And uh, we came out with this one actually um, after our flagship. We started with our flagship, but when we came out with this, the immediate question that people had was, well, do you make one with two seats? And then we went back and showed them our flagship. Well, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I like this because it does short takeoff. It's very uh, robust. It's um, quite a different machine. And so the public was demanding we build a two seat model. And so we did. All right, so we've covered essentially three out of the four. Uh, let's talk about your, your, as you're saying, the flagship model here, which is Bumblebee. Yeah, well, that's the, a lot of the customers will name their uh, paint scheme. So we've had uh, uh, the Patriot and we've had Zilla, short for Godzilla was a green one. This is Bumblebee. We've also done Stinger. We've also done uh, the Hornet, um, but this is a Revo. That's the model of this. And uh, this is definitely our flagship. This particular model is, uh, can go in and out of a, a trailer like the others, but you're gonna spend 45 minutes to an hour getting this one broken down and, and ready to go. So this one's best suited to be in a hangar, kept in a hangar uh, at an airport. It is not short field capable. Um, 1200 foot unobstructed is its minimum runway use, whereas the single seater uh, just requires 500 feet and the Revolt, the two seat Revolt, 600 feet. So it literally uses twice the runway. But this machine can cover six, 700 miles a day when you're doing a cross country. So we can take off from Tampa and be in Nashville the same day. Uh, we got a 100 mile per hour cruise with it. And uh, you've got synthetic vision, touch screen, uh, EFIS, all color uh, with moving map. And then we offer the fuel injected 912 IS on this machine as an option. Comes standard with the 100 horsepower, um, but this is the fuel injected. And this machine has uh, speed trim and roll trim, as does the Revolt as well, which means you can really trim this thing up at whatever speed you want to fly at. And uh, if you're above the clouds where it's pretty much always smooth, you can uh, put your hands in your lap and go for a ride. I've gone over a half hour without having to touch the controls uh, on a long cross-country flight. 
Um, now, once you get down into the bumps, if you're flying midday, um, you're going to definitely need to, you know, fly the plane. But in smooth air, these things will fly themselves. So, question for you: uh, Being this is a wing, do you have trim tabs on the wing itself, or is this more of something that controls, that latches onto the cable and acts kind of like an autopilot? hands-free system. So what's really cool about all of these trikes is there's no cables or pulleys or um, control surfaces whatsoever. So very, very simple design. Um, this one, you can really see it here. This is called a single surface wing. And specifically, its best attribute is how quickly it can fold. It's a very, very low batten count, which are uh, the ribs in the wing. And uh, this just uh, very, very simple. However, the downside to the simplistic wing and how quick it folds and everything is it has a very limited speed range. So this particular one cruises about 48 to 50, um, whereas the Revo with a high performance wing can cruise 40 to 90 miles per hour all with the same wing. So you get a lot of speed range with it. Um, but getting back to how they're trimmed, um, so you have two trims. One is going to be on the wheel pant, and this is the equivalent for you airplane guys at home. This is like an aileron trim tab. These are uh, driven by Ray Allen servos in flight. So if we were to uh, push on the button, um, the trim tabs are going to move together. I'll show you on the Revolt. A little bit of a different design on the Revolt, but it's the same concept. And so... If I push the button to trim right, you'll see both of the trim tabs are moving together. And then we go back the other way. And uh, it's pretty interesting how this works. Um, it's simply putting a force on the back of the trike. So when this comes out, it's obviously pushing this direction. If I'm pushing this direction, if you watch the keel, this is directly connected. And so when this trim tab comes out, it moves the keel towards the wingtip, towards its right wingtip, which actually billows that wing and decreases the angle of attack on the wing, causing it to roll to the right. So it's a little counterintuitive when you look at it. Of course, most trim tabs are, I think. Um, but that's how the roll trim works. And then the speed trim actually moves the entire hang block where you're hanging from on the wing. So up here, if you zoom in, you can actually see there's an aft stop and then there's a forward stop. And that hang block is allowed to uh, run that entire range. So when the hang block is all the way back touching the aft stop, it's in very, very slow flight. Right now, it's in very fast flight. And it's got a little bit more trim to go, which would trim it up to around 100 miles per hour. So essentially, you're weight shifting to trim it? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're literally, and there's a couple different designs that are out on the market. This one, to me, is the simplest and the most effective for um, changing uh, speed on this type of aircraft, but there's a couple other different ways to do it, but this is how we do it. So you mentioned earlier that uh, in cruise, this will reach, this one in particular will reach about 100 miles per hour on the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, when does it stop flying? Um, this one here has a 39 mile per hour stall. Wow. Yep. So typically you're going to be rotating at around 60 to 70 miles per hour with this, climbing out around 70 or 80 miles per hour. So it's moving. When you're in the pattern with a Revo, you're typically uh, following Cessna 152s pretty closely. Uh, Cubs are typically maybe a little bit slower than you are when you're in one of these machines. And so they're very airplane-like. Uh, in fact, the thing that I heard that has always stuck with me is the Revo is not an ultralight, it's a airplane that looks like an ultralight. And of course this is worldwide, ultralight in the US means something completely different, but uh, this one is actually too fast and too heavy to be certified in many parts of Europe in fact. So what is the empty gross on this particular one? This one's right around 690 pounds with an 1160 gross. Um, so you've got a good payload, but uh, you know, it's fast, it's heavy, it's going places. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Aviation Youth Magazine at AviationUSA.com, The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video.
and visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All right, so going to, back to the kind of the mechanics of this, uh, what are the sails made out of? What is the airframe and the cables? Just like, what are the materials uh, made in, in this particular airframe? Yep, so all of our wings are uh, made with Dacron. Um, you're usually in the six ounce Dacron range. And then some of our high performance wings, like this one here is not what I would call a high performance wing. It's our quick fold wing. It uses a little bit more Dacron to reinforce the trailing edge. As you start to get into the high performance wings, you can see it here very easily. Uh, we get into the PX, which is actually a carbon reinforced uh, uh, fabric, uh, which is uh, mylar and uh, some other materials, but it's called PX. And uh, so we use some of that to reinforce the sail, uh, mostly for stuff that goes fast, like you know, 100 miles an hour, you start to use some of the uh, really high performance uh, uh, sail cloths. And then uh, this is over a 6061 uh, aluminum frame. And these wings, including the little ultralight wing, are all rated to 6G's ultimate. So on our machine with an 1160 gross, um, that was inverted with 7,000 pounds of sandbags on it. That's the equivalent of parking two regular sized cars, one on each wing. So they're very, very robust. Um, there's virtually in the history of triking, uh, you're not gonna find any types of uh, structural failures in the wings. You just don't see it. They're really, really well built. That's basically in the aerobatic realm. Yeah, yeah. Now again, this is four usable, six ultimate. Okay. And so four is the maximum, whereas the aerobatic planes uh, will actually use six Gs. So I see. a little bit less. But the thing that's interesting about the trikes is the good and the bad, the, the, the good and the bad is that they can't pull a lot of G's. Uh, what tends to happen because the wing is so elastic is that any time that you try to pull a lot of G's, the trailing edge of the wing will literally wash out and release that energy. And what that does for us, so that's, that's the good and the bad, is that when you're flying in really turbulent conditions, it'll offload those, those forces. And like for like, if you flew an airplane that flew at the same speed, at the same wing loading, the trike is gonna give you a much, much smoother ride. And it's twofold. The wing is flexing and it's offloading the, the, the bumps. And the second part of it is you're in a pendulum. So when the wing goes like this, the passengers inside the pendulum They'll move, and you might even move more, but everything's very smooth. Um, your seatbelt's no longer holding you in in heavy turbulence. Uh, we've all hit our heads on the ceiling in, in a fixed wing before. Sure. Um, you just don't get those negative G loads at all in the trike because of the elasticity of the wing. So, so you, you have a, a built-in air ride system. It is. It is. <laughs> the downside. The downside is they have trouble pulling a lot of G's. Um, so you have to really increase your speed um, before you enter, say, a 60 degree bank turn to pull those two G's. Uh, whereas an airplane, for example, you could, at almost any cruise speed, you could go to a 60 degree bank turn and hold the turn very easily. With the trike, there needs to be a little bit of anticipation, pull on a little bit of speed so that you can pull the G's. So that's the downside to the elastic uh, style wing. Also, if you see them landing, uh, you'll usually see the trikes uh, coming in very hot. And that, again, is for that same reason that they can't create the G-force like a rigid wing. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the safety aspects of these, what um, options are for safety. Yeah, so uh, it is an option on all of our machines, but typically in the U.S., I'd say about 90 plus percent of all the aircraft that go out of here uh, go with some form of an emergency parachute system. And the BRS being the ASTM compliant one that we work with, that is the most popular. It's a rocket propelled and then the parachute is inside this canister. And what that means is that if in the event that you had a medical emergency, a mid-air collision, or complete disorientation in uh, uh, the cloud or something where you don't know which way is up, um, shut the motor down, pull one of the red handles, and uh, the entire aircraft comes down under canopy. And so this is the same manufacturer that Cirrus was using for their whole aircraft parachute system is a BRS. 
and um, you see it here on the Revolt. We've really tucked it inside on the uh, Revo. It's very clean. A lot of people will ask, well, where's the parachute? And I love hearing that because it means we've done a nice job of concealing it. And then even on our... Well, on this, it kind of honestly looks like the crankcase cover of a motorcycle. So it looks like it might be integral to the engine. Yeah, it just kind of looks like it should be there. Right, right. And, uh, you know, as we say, if it saves your life twice, it's paid for itself. All right, so let's talk about suspension from it. This one looks like a super stole uh, competition, uh, stole aircraft here. And the other one seems a little bit more like a street cruiser. Yeah, so this one here has actual Fox brand uh, gas charge shocks on it. They've got 600 PSI of nitrogen in them and uh, highly, highly effective. And then uh, this one here, again, everything being so concealed, we often get the question of, well, does it really have any suspension? And in actuality, it has incredible suspension. So I'll just give you a little demonstration here. And so that's a 7075 uh, one-piece aluminum spring gear. It goes all the way through. And uh, with the shallower angle in the gear, you just get a whole lot of flex. So we typically use Revos. We have four of them for our flight school. We love the Revos because the suspension is so forgiving and you can really, you know, I don't encourage it, but you can really beat on this machine, not only because of the suspension, but also this one has the uh, 4130 box tube chromoly, uh, welded chromoly frame in it. So you don't have to worry about anything ever getting loose on a fully welded steel frame. And uh, it's, uh, it's really, really overbuilt. Um, some of the things that we've done on these machines compared to brand X, Y, and Z is uh, like the axles are three quarter inch axles. Uh, most others are gonna be using like a five eighths axle. Uh, we're using all real aircraft tires. Uh, so these, for example, are six ply tires. We get around 600 to 1000 hours uh, before having to replace them. So just a lot of heavier duty um, uh, things that uh, for flying these, this particular machine has over a thousand hours on it. And uh, we were talking a little bit before the interview and you're saying, wow, it sure doesn't look like it. And that's not somebody taking really meticulous care of it as much as we've got students learn how to land this thing. We've probably trained, I don't know, uh, maybe somewhere around a hundred students with this particular machine. All right, so let's talk about what is the entry level price point to get in to start flying a wing like this uh, all the way up to your, your flagship model and price point. Yep, so there's quite a range in price. Um, our ultralight is ready to fly at uh, today's price. Of course, things are going up in a hurry these days. But as of uh, June 2022, uh, you can get into a Rev ultralight for 24.5 and that is ready to fly. Now there's some options you're probably gonna want. We talked about the parachute. Uh, most of the aircraft are getting the in-dash radios and really nice flycom helmets, and they're gonna want nav lights and landing lights and uh, things of that nature. And that'll definitely push some of the ultralights up another uh, five or $10,000, depending on options. As you get into the RevX, which is our high performance model, those start uh, at uh, just under $40,000. And again, with options, you still wind up in the, the $40,000 range somewhere. So you get into the Revolt, uh, while the base price on these uh, is still in the $50,000 range, uh, most of these aircraft are in at least the low 80s up to around $100,000 with you know, lots and lots of options. Uh, as you get into the Revos, those start in the $90,000 range and usually one twenty dollars to $130,000 for a uh, fully decked out uh, Revo. All right, so somebody want to get in touch with you to come down here to Zephyr Hills to look at this awesome showroom you have here, which honestly looks like I just walked into a sport bike or ATV Yamaha Kawasaki Honda dealership. Um, how can I get in touch with you? And tell us about the either transition training or formal training you do in these. Yep, so you can find all the information about our company and our training uh, at evolutiontrikes.com. And we also have accommodations here and uh, we do a 10 day intensive training course. Uh, we tell our customers up front, expect more than 10 hours of dual, hope for less than 20. And it's usually a very fair statement. And then of course our airline captains raise their hand and let us know that they're pilots. And uh, the truth of the matter is we can take somebody that's never flown uh, about usually the same amount of hours to get them transitioned to the trike as somebody that's a fighter jet pilot, helicopter instructor, tail wheel guy uh, into the trike. It is that different, but it's so worth the, uh, the transition. I myself was a fixed wing guy before I ever stepped foot into a trike uh, over 20 years ago. 
and that little five minute flight uh, really changed my life. Uh, but uh, 10 days and uh, we can get you, and if you already have any type of a, a license already, we can do a weight shift control add-on rating. We have four flight instructors here at our flight school and we're adding a fifth flight instructor, but we just need the two, one to give you the training, no minimum requirement on that, and then another uh, uh, one of the instructors to test you on the training that you received. And then we can fill out the 8710-11 form, send it off to the FAA, you get a new uh, pilot's license in the mail, and that'll give you weight shift control privileges, in, uh, but sport pilot privileges in that class. So even though you're a private pilot, you'll have the, uh, the sport pilot privileges. And then if you do want private pilot, because you can fly these at night and above 10,000 feet, we can do full private pilot. In fact, uh, three of our flight instructors here are private pilot weight shift control instructors. And uh, for that, you cannot do just the simple add-on. Um, uh, so there is an actual test with an examiner to do the uh, private pilot weight shift control. Thanks for sticking around to watch this entire episode. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss a single episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.